I've come to talk about what I do in practice with the different groups that I work with and our entire focus is on um, building capability to better meet the needs of Māori right across the system. Um, and of course we know that what's good for Māori is good for all. So um, I'm used to having slides, that doesn't mean I necessarily talk to them at, at all. Um, I've got a number of roles. My first role is as principal of Newton Central School, which is an inner city, decile, eight innovative school, uh, 21 ethnicities, majority Māori Pacifica, uh, decile eight again I said, um, Māori medium pathways, bilingual pathways, Māori and mainstream pathways. Te Reo Māori is normal at Newton. We have a cultural, uh, 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 a bicultural partnership uh, rep based around the treaty. So we have a governance body that represent it, is mandated by Māori to speak for Māori. Um, we also have Ngāti Whātua, whose strategic plan sits beside us. So we are in deeply involved in um, doing a whole lot of stuff that is a, um, validating Māori knowledge um, and giving value to that and maximising the use of, um, of um, language, um, culture and um, identity. So um, I, I was very interested, uh, I support a lot of what, um, what um, Howard is talking about in terms of the um, sociologi sociological perspective around capital. Um, because I think that what we're trying to do in the initiatives that I'm working with is to maximise the use of all of those things. Human, cultural, social and authoritative. Um, I'll first of all talk about akatamaki. Akatamaki is, um, um, is, a Ma is, the Māori, is the Auckland branch of Te Akatea, the National Māori Principles Organisation. We came together, we've always been together sort of informally, but in 2010, uh, 2009, we formalised ourselves in a, into a body of Māori leaders in Auckland, Māori principles in Auckland to work, to raise capability um, of, a, of Māori leaders, whether they be principals, whether they be senior management, whether they be teachers. Um, and we wanted to do that because we, we saw the need to increase the capability, uh, the capacity, firstly, of principalship in Auckland in the context, in the unique context of Auckland, and particularly in, um, in light of the changing demographics, where the population is predominantly Māori, um, Pacifica and Asian, and will continue to be so on increasingly levels. So there is a need for uh, an approach to the work that we do in schools to, um, to meet the needs of, of um, those groups w within the community. So um, we have a commonality, and our commonality is that we're Māori. And so within that we have a deep sense of connection, and our, uh, relationships and connections, whanaungatanga. Now whanaungatanga is what, what um, Howard's talking about is relationships as a starting place of all of that. Whanaungatanga, um, deep connections, um, are just a knowledge and connection, hunonga is another word in the real that expresses that it goes beyond just a relationship, but a deep, deep heartfelt uh, connection. So we, uh, our job is to um, work together to support each other as Māori be, and to have a collective voice, which is critical. So we are of whānau, we stand as one and we speak as one. Um, we are growing um, principal positions. We've had two of our members um, go on into principal positions. Um, one of them's rocking along, got really strong relationships with Ngāti Tamu out here. Another one went into a school and left because they felt totally disempowered to use their cultural capital in terms of what they saw needed to happen within that school to meet the needs of all children. And I guess, um, so what we've done is we've been coming together for years around this and we're looking at, and we're saying that, you know, we are very aware of the government's priorities and the increasing needs of Māori and the desperation around that 
in terms of time. We don't have time, we have to get it right. So what we did is um, we made a very clear commitment to, and we put our hands up to open our organisation, our hearts, and, our, and to share our knowledge. So what we did is we said we will invite non-Māori who want to engage with us uh, to join with us and we will provide. So what we, we said that, we, we looked at, okay, we've got, uh, it's a Māori organisation, so we Māori full me membership, but we opened it up to an associate membership so that we could get those people that wanted to do it but maybe didn't have the knowledge to enable them to walk with us to learn. So, um, so that's what we're doing now. We've got, um, we're providing um, deep learning in terms of uh, ex access for non-Māori to deep Māori knowledge oh, to certain levels um, that is going to enable those people to better work with Māori. Um, our, our, belief is, um, our belief is that without that partnership and without that collaboration across cultures, change will not happen in our schools regardless of what initiatives we put on top. So collaboration across culture between Māori and non-Māori and, and Pacifica and non-Pacifica um, are critical and to um, acknowledge that leadership rather than it being invisible and that the knowledge that those people have is not necessarily utilised to inform some of the practices, both leadership and organisational. So that's where um, Akatamaki comes from. Um, it is primarily about our survival as Māori principles within a monocultural system. So we're aware that through working as a collective, we are, have a degree of safety. In an organisation, we are, we are a, a minority. I think there are 4% of principles in this country who are Māori. Uh, I think there are about 20 of us, in all, 20 to 25 in Auckland, most of those are in Kurakaupapa. Um, Akatamaki goes right across um, um, mainstream, immersion, Kurakaupapa, uh, Wharekura, um, whare, uh, Kuraiwi, and um, yeah, so we've got members right across those pathways. Um, now, out of um, the relationship between Akatamaki and Akatia, Akatia, the national group, have a partnership relationship with NZPF and they sit around the table. As a result of getting some quite strong um, leadership um, and Māori voiced uh, around that table on NZPF, we had Kerry um, Milne Ihimaira and um, um, Peter Witana who sat around that table uh, observed the culture and the way that it operated and it actually started to make some challenges around that. And as a result, initially there was defensiveness. Now Howard's talked about this defense, this culture of defensiveness and, and, he's, and basically if he took that theory of action a little bit further, it would say, he would say very clearly that defensiveness stops learning. So when we say that the needs of Māori is um, crisis, it's actually true. There's evidence from heaven that says that we need to get better at what we do to raise outcomes. And I'm, I'm not focusing on a narrow way about achievement, I'm talking about outcomes for money. So um, what happened as a result of that, there was a lot of pain. It was like, and the only thing I can liken it to, and you guys might not know, but you might have observed it with your partners when the change happened, the women's movement. And in the women's movement, what happened as a part of the women's movement and also in the Māori movement was a process um, called conscientisation. And out of conscientisation came knowledge, came a collective knowledge and a collective way of seeing and understanding oppression. And as a result of understanding that oppression and seeing where things were placed very clearly, we were able to step out of it. So women were able to step out of the box that we were put in and take on different ways of being and our value. We wanted the value recognised. It's the same process for Māori. It is valuing. It's valuing that, um, we could say it was gender, but it was actually a, a, a capital. You know, the capital of being woman, the value of being woman, uh, not to be denigrated or, 
you know, put down or abused or, or so. So it's the same, exactly the same. Um, and it's using that lens of what you know to bring to learning about other areas. So out of that, what happened as a result of that um, engagement, we saw a heck of a lot of movement from NZPF in terms of the way they worked and the way they saw what needed to happen. So from there came um, the establishment of the MAX. Now I'm the national coordinator of the MAX. I'm also the um, regional coordinator for um, Auckland. Um, the MAX is, um, is a Māori Achievement Collaborative. It is a national organisation. Um, we have six regional facilitators, facilitators across the country. Um, at the, and it was a, it's a programme that was initiated, uh, it fell out of those programmes that was driven by Kerry and Peter, it was supported by the NZPF and Te Akatea, and it was supported by the Minister. So it was put in place for a year, and it expires in June this year. What happens then, it went to, it went to the NZPF um, National Hui in 2013, it was presented there, and there was a call for, if you're interested in this Māori co collaboration about um, uh, strengthening Māori achievement and with a huge focus on whānau engagement, put your name down on this paper and we'll get in touch with you. So, and, and it, was, it was that, if you're prepared to be challenged and supported, actually, put your name on this bit of paper. And um, so people did. Um, and as a result, we've got 60 principals from right across the country that have put their hand up um, to be challenged and supported. And that, I believe, is very, very courageous because what they've done, they are, some of them are Māori on a journey to discovering and realising that, like many of our kids are in our school. And, um, but the majority are uh, non-Māori. So there's Pacificus, there's Māori, there's uh, South African, so it's a very diverse group. Um, and that group, we get together, part of my, we come together as a whole group. We have, the, the premise of that relationship goes back exactly to what Howard's talking about, is about whanaungatanga, which is about um, actually establishing yourself, being relational, establishing yourself as a whanau, as a strong collective, and developing relational trust. So the core value, the principle of it is whanaungatanga, which is relationships and connections, and commitment. Um, the second part of that is about um, being a whanau, um, from, from a Māori point of view, is about responsibility and about accountability to the collective. So what, we, what we've done is basically spent um, what we do is we get together um, in our regional clusters and we, we, we're, we're using the um, measurable gains framework, I don't know if people know about that, as the tool to see where people start. The measurable gains framework is uh, a ministry document that is a matrix that, uh, that identifies practice, what you would see in practice um, if things were going amazingly well and things were flying and what, what, where you are uh, now and what would, might be the next possible step all around um, Māori education inclusive of whānau engagement. So it's a great tool, if you haven't seen it, have a look at it. Um, so we use that as a base as well as some other data gathering um, um, tools to have a look at where people were and that was also around the understanding of um, the treaty for instance, and also of their, and their knowledge of their Māori community within their schools. So people, people said, well, um, I don't know what the, you know, who's the mana whenua of my school, who's this? And I say, well, look, you know, look to the people within your school first. Where do they come from? You know, find out that, make those links, get a clear picture of Māori within your school. So this process has been going on. What's happening as a result of it in schools is phenomenal change. And the change is in the hearts and the minds of the principals. So what's happening as a result is principals are distributing that to their 
across across their schools. So many of them now are bringing their DPs on board and they're sharing their stories. So we get together in a national wānanga. Um, we had one last year and we had one, uh, we've got one organised for May this year in Taranaki. And there we share our stories. But the, the critical factor in this is puno, is truth. And it's about actually, it's about courage. It's about having the courage to learn and to be an active, engaged learner, to understand that there are some things that you don't know. It is about saying, it is about a commitment to walking together in a partnership for our children. Um, what I see, I see um, as a result of this, I, I'll tell you a little bit more, this collaborative is funded. Not for schools, but to enable the facilitators to go out of their schools to work with other uh, across the other schools in the cluster. So in Auckland, for instance, I've got 10 schools within the cluster. I've got about eight waiting outside to come in. Um, and we're now working out, we're, we're now looking at how we might continue this because whilst the aim in the end is raised, uh, improved outcomes for Māori students, change takes time. Now, that change, I believe, um, that change has to come from the hearts and minds of leaders. That if that cult deep, um, when H Howard talks about cultural capital, I think that we have this capital in our schools, particularly in relation to Māori perception. We don't necessarily have a relational thing here with Māori. So, you know, in schools, what, what, um, in schools, uh, if you understand anything about Māori tikanga, you must understand that the process of first meeting um, determines friend or foe, porphyry. The space that you enter will determine in that first moment of time and meeting whether you're friend or foe. Māori will go just like that in a sec, in the initial meeting with you, where you fit, what, you know, they will perceive and make an assumption about that. Just the same as you might make those assumptions about Māori. But to Māori, um, relationships, whanaungatanga, connection, hononga, are absolutely critical to all we do. So what happens around these tables when we get together as a cluster is truth. Is uh, whether that says, oh, you know, for years I thought Māori were dumb. I really believe that. And I believe that because. Or part of the process is about actually facilitating an unpacking of perception. That perception is how, what do you perceive as Māori? What, is, what are the messages that we get? So it's about, it is about growing our minds <coughs> to shift our hearts, to change our minds to improve practice in relation to Māori. And it's done collaborative, collaboratively. So the, the, the core values are honesty, are trust, um, uh, commitment, um, courage, um, respect, um, and a couple of other things, I, I, you know, just on my back foot at the moment. But actually, it is making a huge difference. And it's driven by tikanga. It's driven by Māori, and there is this, people are going, wow. The initiatives that I'm seeing happening are really strengthened relationships with Iwi, and I'm talking about Christchurch. Christchurch has got a cluster of about 13 schools. They have got amazing relationships with Iwi. Iwi are backing those schools, providing them with knowledge and expertise to integrate into curriculum. Iwi knowledge, iwi stories, iwi this, iwi that. Over on the North Shore, I got an email at the beginning of the year for this one teacher who really wanted to respond to a Māori community saying, um, that when I've done, I've, I've got, we decided as a whānau, because the first stage in any move with Māori, and you need to know that, whatever we do is as a collective. You know, when, we're, when we walk into schools as Māori, we walk in as individuals. It's having a reason to bring us together as a collective that a process starts. So it's about saying, actually, 
This collaboration could be incredibly informed by, by tikanga Māori. Um, if you look at um, the, uh, uh, if you look at what's happening within Kurakau Papa Māori, and I know we hear all the things about not working, but did you know that actually Māori and Māori medium programs are doing much much better than Māori in mainstream, and they've only been going for a very short time. So what's the common factor there? Whānau, collective, whanaungatanga, collaboration, ownership, um, engagement, voice, agency. So though you apply all of those things to a collaboration. And, I th and the other thing that Akatamaki are doing, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 put it, providing professional development for non Māori, but also want to formalise relationships, we've put our hand out to say that we will walk with anyone that wants to walk with us. We're not going to be, we can't do what we believe needs to be done within our schools by only ever utilising one basket of one people's knowledge. The system will not change unless we value the knowledge that is unique to this country. Whether that, well, particularly at this stage, where I'm coming from, Māori knowledge, in terms of what Māori might need and what might work for Māori. If we do the same, we'll get the same. So we start, we need to start listening to voices of practice that are contextualised within this unique context of Aotearoa New Zealand. Ah, oh, boy.